On today's episode of Locked On 76ers, their eight-game winning streak is snapped. But why is not time to panic at all after that loss? We'll break it all down next right here, Locked On 76ers. You are Locked On 76ers, your daily Philadelphia 76ers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome, you're locked on 76ers. I'm Devon Givens from 97.5, the Fanatic Radio in Philadelphia, alongside my co-hosts and partners, always, Keith Pompey, Sixers beat writer for TheInquirer.com. What's happening, Keith? What's good, D? How you been, bro? Going all right, man. We want to thank everybody for making Locked On 76ers your first listen every day. And remember, Locked On 76ers is free and available on all platforms, including right here on YouTube at Locked On 76ers. Keith, we got to break down the game from last night, so we'll get into all of that. And uh, let people know why we both agree. There's no need to panic after last night's loss to the Chicago Bulls. We look ahead to the upcoming trip and so much more on this episode of Locked On 76ers. But yeah, Keith, uh, a 105, 109-105 double overtime loss last night to the Chicago Bulls at the center as the Sixers make a quick pit, pit stop back home in Philadelphia, back on the road Wednesday in Chicago for the four game roadie. And uh, while things, it was awful, the, the game in general, uh, but they lost by four points, took them to double overtime. Joel and B fouled out in double overtime. And yet, Keith, they were still in it and had an opportunity to win. And therefore, man, based on everything that is going on, as hot as this team has been, I think they've earned a little bit of leeway from me with a loss like that last night. Man, get it out of here. It's like, just joking. Just joking. <laughs> nah, I'm, I'm with you. Here's the thing, D. We talked about it. I mean, beforehand, we talked about how this was going to be a tough matchup just because of DeMar, De, DeMar DeRozan and, um, and and Zach Levine, right? So you, you have that dynamic. And on top of that, you know what I mean? The Sixers, they've been playing extremely well. And as you said before we came on, it's as if they're still on the road. You know what I mean? Like, they basically got off a three-game road trip, came home, changed the laundry, played a game, and go right back. And you know, D, you've been covering the NBA longer than me. You know that first game back off of a road trip is always a tough one. Now you got to go back on the road. So when I look at it, I, I see, like, I saw a team that looked tired. That's what I saw. But I also look at this as probably a good test for them because – you know, everything, things just didn't go right for them. So this is something that they could build on, maybe refocus a little bit. Um, but nah, I'm I'm not really concerned. Like you said, Joel Embiid, um, Joel Embiid fouled out. James Harden had his second worst shooting performance of the season. And they still only lost by what, four points in double overtime. Now, again, the Sixers are a good team. They could have seized the moment, but I'm not concerned. I'm not concerned. No, not at all. They could have seized the moment. They actually did have the lead, even when Joel and B fouled out 105, 101 after Tobias Harris baseline jumper. Uh, but then DeMar DeRozan hit two baskets uh, while he was fouled on the second one, missed a free throw to tie it at 105 each. Uh, the Sixers had another opportunity to get something done, but James Harden turned the basketball over. So, you know, yeah. there it was. And a big part of the loss last night was the 21 turnovers that they had leading to Chicago's 24 points the other way. And uh, even with that, I thought the Sixers defense was still decent, still good enough to win the game. They only gave up 109 points to that Chicago team that can score the basketball. So, uh, yeah, man, uh, for, for this one, honestly, it, it, it was just one of those games. And you you, you look at it. And if they win it, you're like, okay, cool. Let's throw this tape away. We 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 stole one. We snuck away with the victory. But even in this loss, you, you, you take a step back, you see what you did wrong, and you just move on. I thought they would lose one of these two games to Chicago, and they lost this one. Now, rebound. Go back on the road. Take it, because I actually think that that was the better loss to start the road trip. So now they can get the road trip underway with the victory and regroup, reestablish themselves again on the road, out of living out of their suitcases and knowing that they have not only Phoenix, Golden State, but also Denver 
uh, on the back end uh, of that trip. So uh, I thought they would lose one. They dropped this one. This wasn't the one that I thought they would lose, but I, I took some positives out of it because I thought they played hard and they never quit. They could have given up because of what the game looked like and how it was all playing out, but they didn't. They kept fighting through it. They kept playing. They kept trying. And everything was just sloppy. Tobias Harris turned the ball over. B turned the ball over five times. Same thing for James Harden. They just had uh, some some timely turnovers that you didn't want to be timely, uh, especially live ball turnovers where they were going the other way. Timely turnovers, right? Right. Uh, Where they were going the other way for some fast break buckets on the night. So uh, you give credit to Chicago for for hanging in there. They've won uh, now three in a row. They're eight and four with Pat Beverly in the starting lineup since they acquired him. So they got to regroup and be ready for him on Wednesday when they play the Chicago Bulls in, in Chicago. So, but I'm not, I'm not concerned at all. And that that's just what they've built up from all of us, the way that they've been playing since December. And that's just how it goes. When we come back, we got to talk about James Harden because uh, Doc Rivers put a little something out there also thinking that uh, make a, make us think about why he did perform the way he did last night. Talking about maybe dealing with that foot soreness while playing last night. Let's get into that a little bit on the next next segment right here. Locked on 76ers. You know, let's talk about uh, prize picks, right? Nah, I'm sorry, prize picks. We ain't going to talk about y'all today. My bad, my bad, my bad. Don't kill me, don't kill me, don't kill me. Let's talk about FanDuel. So, look, FanDuel, I love FanDuel just like I love prize picks, right? Now, here's the reason why I love FanDuel. Because you know what? The NCAA tournament is heating up, and now it's the perfect time to download FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Because, because new customers get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't win. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Then you can bet on everything from the money lines to point scores to threes drain. Plus, FanDuel even lets you combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with a same game parlay. So don't miss the chance to get your no sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to fanduel.com backslash locked on. That's fanduel.com backslash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. And then when you get done with that, Go to, you know, uh, the first bet stuff. Peace. Welcome back to Locked On 76ers. And thank you for making Locked On 76ers your first listen. For your next listen, check out the Locked On Now podcast. Nightly recaps of every NBA game with analysis from our local experts. It's free and available wherever you get your podcast. Keith, James Harden, five points, 12 assists last night. The uh, five turnovers that we talked about. Picked up a couple of rebounds in there as well. But he was two for, what was he, two for 10? Two for 14. Two for 14, 0 for 6 from three, and only one free throw. Um, We just talked about it being a schedule loss and all that. So I would just let that one go. He just looked out of sorts. He was off, just fumbling the basketball. I've never seen him so loose. He's had higher turnover games where I thought they were bad, but this one was worse because you watch him and he's dribbling. The ball is just going off of his hands. And you're like, what is going on with James Harden? He even had the game off on Saturday where he didn't play against the Indiana Pacers. What's up with him? But he was he wasn't good. And then Doc Rivers later on in the postgame press conference mentioned how this foot soreness, which he missed the game for on Saturday, might have been bothering him. Is that an excuse or is that something that is real and even if it was real is that an excuse that is real that doc rivers probably didn't need to share i mean i'm glad he shared it i mean you you, you, like transparency transparency is always best i mean i you know the thing is that's something that you got to monitor at least i mean because when you look at it that's why they give him the days off well yeah that's but i'm talking about monitor like as far as like you know, people paying attention to oh, it. That's on the if, it, if, it, if it continues. Right. Yeah, you give them the days off. But, you know, the thing is, you know, I, I felt like the foot was bothering them. Yeah, yeah. But also I felt like Pat Bev was just getting all up in the skin. I felt like DeMar DeRozan was stripping them too. Like, you got to understand something. Pat Beverly used to play with him. He's a competitor. He knows what he, he knows, like, I'm a, what James is going to do. 
And people forget him and DeMar DeRozan both grew up together in Compton. Now, they didn't go to the same high school. I don't even know if they lived in the same neighborhood, so to speak. But they both came out of came out of um, like high school together, I believe, the same year. They're like a month apart. So that's kind of like a rival. Two McDonald's All-Americans from the same area. Come on now. So so I, I think that that's that competitive thing. The one thing that I may be a little concerned about when I look at this is that he is, and again, James has been playing great, but they went up against Cleveland, high turnovers. They Then they play Charlotte. Yeah, you can smack Charlotte, right? And then all of a sudden they come here, high turnovers. So that's just something that they the 76ers have to monitor. And the fact that Doc did say something was wrong with the foot, I know some people are panicking. Other people are being dismissive um, with it. I just think it's something to just pay attention to just to see how it is. Because at this particular time, just about everyone is playing with an ailment, right? I mean, there's no healthy people there. But this is just something to monitor. And he didn't look like his normal pep in the step, you know, in the locker room yesterday. Now, he wasn't like as bad as he was before. But this is just something I think that we all should monitor. There was no need to have a pep in the step after that stat line that he put out there. I mean, <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's nothing to be all, all too all excited about last night. So I, I understand why he didn't have that necessary pep in the step, that extra bounce in his game. I mean, in, at post game. Yeah, he just he just didn't look himself. And there are nights when you have that. And we're talking about what game number? What was that? 71 last night. So yeah. game number 71. And even though he hasn't played in all of them because of missing the 14 games due to the foot and the load management after returning because of his uh, sore foot. He, he he did that was, as you said, probably the second, if not the worst performance of the season. And I, I, he has done enough, though, where I like we just said about the team, where I give him a little bit of leeway to see if he comes back and bounces back. The guy's averaging 21 and 10 on the season. He's been tremendous. He'll probably be an all NBA performer uh, or at least be in a conversation for one of those guard spots uh, on the on sure? all NBA teams, especially with your team being in the top three all now basically all season long, him being a big part of that. Uh, let's see. We, that is something to monitor. I agree with you that we'll keep an eye on it, see how he – see how he comes out and see if he's ready to play. See if he's see how they list him on the injury report too by tomorrow for for his uh, availability for the game against the Chicago Bulls. So, we'll see, but a bad performance and Doc Rivers said it, but let's see how he bounces back from that that uh, awful game. All right, we we'll come back. Keith, we need to talk to the folks. You were in the building last night. The team did honor at halftime, the 82-83 Sixers. We need to talk about what it was like in the building and share what it was like also at the practice facility earlier on in the day when we were both there with all the, the greats back in town. We'll, we'll do that next right here, final segment, Locked On 76ers. <laughs> All right, welcome back. Locked on 76ers, Keith. The uh, 40 years, 40 years uh, this year, the 1982-83 Philadelphia 76ers won the championship, the last championship for the organization. We've seen championships since then with the baseball team, the football team here in the city, and the Sixers have been there, but they've been unable, unable to capture the trophy uh, again. And the guys were back in town. We were both there at the practice facility earlier on in the day. You were there at halftime. So just your quick thoughts, man, on what the halftime ceremony was like, having all those guys back there from Bobby Jones to Dr. J, Mo Cheeks, an assistant coach on Billy Donovan's staff on the Chicago Bulls. What was it like in there? It was great, man. It was great. I mean, you know, I wish Moses and, uh, you know, was still alive. You know, you wish Andrew Tony was in the building, you know, McNamara. Um, you know, uh, you know, uh, Billy Cunningham, great coach, was unable to make it. So I wish those guys would have been there. But 
the thing to me was was seeing Mo Cheeks because you know Mo Cheeks was you know he was he, of all of them you got to say Dr. J is like you know the longest tenured sixer with them but Mo Cheeks went on to become a coach and he's an assistant coach and a coach for the Sixers so to me even though he they traded him he was Mr. Sixer you know what I mean for the longest time and the you know they little riff with the organization but the fact that he was able to come, I mean, they played his team, so he had no excuse. But the fact that he was out there with the ceremony was 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 really kind of not touching, but it was a, a good moment for me. Like, I really enjoyed seeing Mo Cheeks out there. Yeah, so he wasn't at the practice facility earlier in the day for obvious reasons. <laughs> you know, he had some work to do. <laughs> he had some work to do with the Bulls game planning for the Sixers that night. But, yeah, it was good to see him because – I looked up at the television at one point while I was doing the show and he's on TV doing uh, the uh, NBC broadcast with uh, Mark Jackson and, and Amy Fadul and Jim Lynham. And they're sitting down talking to Mo Cheeks about the whole deal uh, because we had a chance to speak to everyone else. So it was cool to see that, you know, he was able to do something and, and speak with the local media. And he did have a suit on. He was the only coach with a suit on uh, on the sideline yesterday because of of all of that. So it was really nice to see him there. It was great to talk to those guys. I had a chance to speak with a number of them doing some stuff for um, helping the Sixers out. And it, it was really cool. And even when we were in the gym talking to Earl Curitan and Clint Richardson, those dudes have stories, man. They can talk and they have a bunch of stories. It was great. It was great. And to have them co-mingle now with the current group where there are a lot of parallels with these two teams, with the losses that the Sixers suffered in the past before they won the championship in 83 and what the Sixers not on the same level because of the second round losses this current group has had under the Embiid era between he and Tobias Harris dealing with a bunch of those and even Tyrese Maxey the last couple of seasons where there are a few parallels and those players talked about it where they see the same thing but they also mentioned how they see where this team is really uh, pretty well built and primed to finally win it and hoping that they actually do win it but it was good to see all of those guys back in the building yesterday, man, and being acknowledged for their championship. True that, true that. Absolutely. Well, listen, man, we got we to gotta talk about some Sixers basketball a little bit more tomorrow when they kick off the road trip with the Chicago Bulls. We'll have that for you tomorrow morning. Uh, but first, we got to thank you for making Locked On 76ers your first listen every day. Now make your second listen Locked On NBA. Locked on experts covering the biggest stories around the NBA every Monday through Friday in less than 30 minutes. It is free and available wherever you get your podcast. Keith, you mind letting the good folks know where they can find us? Like D just said, wherever you get your podcast, make sure you come and get this podcast, right? I mean, just click on the Liberty Bell when you go to our YouTube channel and you become a new subscriber. You also will get alerts whenever we do it. Today, my man D is going to be on an early shift, early shift. He, so um, from 2 to 10 p.m. Two to 6. On 90, I mean, excuse me. That's a long day. <laughs> yeah, 2 to 6 p.m. You know what? I'm looking at it, but I'm like, yo, 2 to 6 p.m. So, you, so you're going to be uh, you're going to be on TV. Yeah, I got TV today, yeah. Okay, yeah. okay, okay, player. Okay. Hey, so y'all really need to tune in. So D's going to be on TV from 2 to 6 p.m. Um, holding it down. And the radio about- side. In the radio, yeah, on the radio side, but you know, but um, the radio, but you know how it is, you know how this stuff is. So, but um, so D's going to do that. So check them out, right? But also make sure you follow my man D on Twitter at Divine G nine seven five. Follow me on Twitter at Pompeii on Sixers. You can read my stuff in the Philadelphia Inquirer, inquire.com. All right, man. Well, listen, uh, safe trip to you going to Chicago. Make sure your bag's packed, man, ready to roll because you're living out of a suitcase too, just like the basketball team. Uh, so yeah. safe travels. We'll talk to you tomorrow. And uh, thanks, everybody, for listening and watching. We appreciate it. Thanks, Keith. Peace.